Hi there, Marius here with the Resuscitation Coach. On this channel, we do all things resuscitation, so please consider subscribing. In today's video, we'll be discussing the Neonatal Resuscitation Program 8th Edition Guidelines, specifically focusing on out-of-hospital resuscitation. So let's jump straight in. Here we go. Although neonatal resuscitation outside the hospital presents with different challenges, the physiological principles and basic steps remain the same. Regardless of the location of the birth, the most important step in neonatal resuscitation is ventilating the baby's lungs. Birth asphyxia is associated with both an increase in mortality and morbidity by learning and using the skills of neonatal resuscitation, healthcare professionals can make a difference in outcomes. Let's review the four pre-birth questions that will guide us with our equipment and manpower arrangements. Gestational age, amniotic fluid clear, additional risk factors and umbilical cord management plan. Once we have answered our pre-birth questions, we need to review and prepare our equipment. We use the memory aid or acronym HOSE to guide us to do a quick and complete check. Heat, oxygen, suction, stethoscope, ET equipment and drugs. When a baby is born, Outside the hospital, maintaining the baby's temperature between 36.5 and 37.5 degrees Celsius can become a challenge. Some suggestions to minimize heat loss include preheating the room or ambulance to 74 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Use warm bath towels, blankets or clean clothing for drying the baby. Use the mother's body as a heat source and place the baby skin to skin with a warm blanket. Don't forget a hat to keep the head warm. Consider covering the baby in food grade plastic if the baby is preterm. Emergency teams and clinicians performing home births should have a portable thermal mattress available. Always remember that the most important step in neonatal resuscitation is ventilating the baby's lungs. The NRP recommends that all personnel who may need to resuscitate newborns outside the hospital should carry an appropriately sized bag and mask and oxygen source, just in case that PPV is needed. For a term baby, begin PPV at 21%, which is room air. For a baby less than 35 weeks, we can start between 21 to 30 percent. In the out-of-hospital environment, an oxygen blender most likely will not be available. Try to administer between 5 to 10 liters per minute of oxygen if the pulse oximetry is below the target range. If the newborn is breathing and has a heart rate greater than 100 beats per minute, but the oxygen saturation is below the target range, give free flow oxygen. When PPV is started, connect a pulse oximeter and cardiac monitor as to have an accurate understanding of the patient's heart rate and saturation. Our primary suction device in neonatal resuscitation will be a bulb syringe. We should also have a mechanical suction device ready at 80 200 millimeters mercury. If no suction is available, we can use a clean handkerchief or cloth. Initially, the baby's heart rate should be assessed by auscultating the chest with a stethoscope until a pulse oximeter and ECG becomes available. If an alternative airway is needed, 
after an out-of-hospital birth for a baby who weighs at least 1.5 kilogram, the NRP program suggests the use of a size 1 LMA due to the difficulties of endotracheal intubation in and out of the hospital setting. Always follow your local protocol related to advanced airway management. Other items needed for advanced airway maneuvers, if within your scope, include a laryngoscope with size 1 Miller blade for term infants and a size 0 Miller blade for preterm infants. We will need various sizes of ET tubes from 2.5, 3 and 3.5 with a stylet. Once intubated and we remove the stylet, the next step will be to attach a CO2 detector and auscultating the lungs to confirm placement. Once placement has been confirmed, we can secure the tube with a tape or a commercially manufactured device. Our medication that needs to be available is epinephrine, 1 mg in 10 ml or 1 in 10,000 concentration. Once we have intubated, we can give epinephrine down the ET tube. Emergency catheterization of the umbilical vein will not be an option in most out-of-hospital systems and the prompt insertion of an intraosseous needle will be needed. Attempts at inserting a peripheral intravenous catheter are likely to be unsuccessful due to the baby's poor perfusion. Always remember to follow your local protocols. We should also have normal saline at 10 moles per kilogram should be available. At birth, we need to ask the following three questions. Is the baby term? Does the baby have good muscle tone? Is the baby breathing or crying? Your initial steps will include to provide warmth, dry, stimulate, don't forget to remove the wet linen, and then position the airway in the sniffing position and clear secretions if needed. If the baby does not have apnea or gasping and the heart rate is at least 100 but there is labored breathing or persistent cyanosis, attach the pulse oximeter and if indicated we can start providing oxygen. CPAP could also be an option if available. If the baby has apnea or gasping or the heart rate is below 100, immediately start with positive pressure ventilation or PPV. PPV should be started within one minute of birth as indicated by the red vertical line at the top of the PPV rectangle. Our ventilation rate is 40 to 60 breaths per minute which is one breath every one to two seconds. Breathe two, three. Breathe two, three. Breathe two, three. Breathe two, three. Consider our ventilation corrective steps of Mr. Sopa when there is difficulties with ventilations. Mask adjustment and reposition. Then try to give five breaths and assess for chest movement. If no chest movement, Try the next steps. Suction and open the mouth. Try again. And if that does not work, increase the pressure and try again. After the pressure increase, you could consider an alternative airway. If the chest is moving, continue PPV for 30 seconds while you monitor your ventilation rate, pressure and the baby's heart rate in response to the PPV. After 30 seconds of effective ventilation, as indicated by an increasing heart rate and chest movement, we will check the baby's heart rate response again. If the heart rate is greater than or equal to 100, PPV has been successful. We need to continue ventilating at a rate of 40 to 60 breaths per minute and monitor the heart rate and respiratory effort. We need to adjust the FiO2 based on the target oxygen saturation table. When the heart rate is constantly greater than 100, gradually reduce the rate of PPV. Observe 
for effective spontaneous respirations and gently stimulate the baby to breathe. Positive pressure ventilation may be discontinued when the baby has a heart rate continuously greater than 100 and sustained spontaneous breathing. If the heart rate is at least 60 but less than 100 and the heart rate is improving, continue to administer PPV as long as the baby is showing steady improvement. Monitor the oxygen saturation and adjust the FiO2 to meet the target saturation range. If the heart rate is not improving, consider each of the following. Quickly reassess your ventilation technique. Is the chest moving? Are you ventilating at a rate of 40 to 60 breaths per minute? Do you hear breath sounds? If necessary, perform the ventilation corrective steps and adjust the FiO2 to meet the target saturation level. If not already done, consider placing a cardiac monitor for continuous monitoring. If not already in place, consider placing an LMA or an endotracheal tube. If the heart rate remains below 60, despite at least 30 seconds of effective PPV, immediately turn the FiO2 to 100% and start chest compressions and review after 60 seconds. After 30 seconds of PPV, another 60 seconds of chest compression and the heart rate remains below 60, consider epinephrine. Epinephrine ET and IV doses have been simplified for educational efficiency, making it easier to remember. Again, we'll be using the 1 mg in 10 ml concentration or 1 in 10,000. Our ET dose will be 1 ml per kilogram and our IV dose will be 0.2 ml per kilogram. We should also not forget to consider hypovolemia and a pneumothorax. A newborn who requires PPV more than 30 to 60 seconds should be transferred to a medical facility for close monitoring and post-resuscitation care and evaluation. For more information about the 8th edition neonatal resuscitation program, see our other videos on the NRP series. In the 2020, the American Academy of Pediatrics Committee on Fetus and Newborn published a policy statement providing care for infants born at home. The statement addressed resuscitation of the newborn after home birth, as well as initial care and follow-up. Both the AAP and the NRP believe that hospitals and accredited birth centers are the safest settings for birth in the United States because planned home births are associated with a twofold to threefold increase in perinatal mortality. Therefore, the AAP and NRP do not recommend planned home births. However, the AAP and NRP recognizes that women have the autonomy to choose the location of their baby's birth and some will choose a home birth. Women who chooses a planned home birth should be fully informed that in the event of an unanticipated emergency, it is unlikely that the personnel, supplies and equipment necessary to perform a complex neonatal resuscitation will be immediately available in the home environment and any delay may result in an adverse outcome for the newborn. If you benefited from this video, kindly like, subscribe and smash that notification bell. We'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day.